Over the next several videos, we're going to talk about Unreal Kismet. Kismet is a visual scripting system. Now, what that means is that it's a scripting system that allows artists, or non-coding kinds of people, to create scripted behavior in their levels in a quick, intuitive, and easy manner. Now, you can take a look at Kismet at any time in your level, but what I want to do first is jump into this level that I've set up, kind of show you what's going on so you get an idea of the kind of things Kismet is doing here in this particular level. Then we'll open up and take a look at this level's Kismet, and then as we move through progressive videos, I'll show you how to actually set this up yourself. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and just jump in start playing this level. Now, the, this first part you might have actually seen, but this is using Kismet, too. We have a door that slides open. It's pretty easy to set up. Now, over here next to the door, we have a light switch. So if we take a look up here, we have a light that activates and deactivates, and it has its own sound effect. Up here on top of the stairs, we have another switch that's red instead of blue. And if we hit this, we get a message. This is not a light switch. Please don't touch it. Hit it again. It says, no, seriously, this will not turn on the lights. You want the blue switch next to the door. See it? And yeah, of course I see it, but I still want to push this button. So it says, is it really so hard to just leave this switch alone? And then finally, if you hit it one more time, okay, have it your way, but don't say we didn't warn you. 10, 9, 8, 7, Try to run out the door, six, five, but it won't open. Four, three, two, one. And we blow up. So that's a pretty simple Kismet sequence, but let's just take a look at it. Now you can get to Unreal Kismet by clicking on the Open Unreal Kismet button located here in the main toolbar, or as an alternative, if it's easier for you, you can go under View and choose Unreal Kismet. So here we are inside the Kismet editor, and what you're going to see are a series of nodes called sequence objects and several wires that connect them all together. Now, for simplicity's sake, let's pick on something that's fairly straightforward, like our door. Actually, you know what? Let's take a look at the light switch. I changed my mind. The light switch is even easier. Now, when you're working in Kismet, there are just a few different types of sequence objects that you're going to be using. There are events, actions, and variables. Now, those are your big ones. There's other things, too. There are comparisons which allow you to uh, measure up a value against another value, but your big ones are going to be events, actions, and variables, at least for the purposes of this lecture. Now, what we see here is an event. This event is represented as the node you see here. Now, what is this event? It is trigger underscore zero used. What this is doing is it's listening out for the player, or anybody really, to make use of this trigger in some way, to go up and actually hit the E key and engage the trigger. As soon as that happens, you see several wires that are leading out of the node, and they're coming out of what is called an output that is labeled used. So as soon as somebody uses that trigger, some things are going to happen. And what do we have? Well, we have a little tiny arrow here which leads out to a play sound sequence object, which is playing our lighting sound effect. We have another one here in the middle, which is toggling a light bulb on. And you can actually see that light bulb here stored inside of a variable. So take a look at this toggle action for just a moment. We have an input feeding into toggle, which means uh, firing it once will turn a light on, firing it a second time will turn the light back off. At the bottom, we have several other inputs. We have a target, which basically tells this toggle action to whom should you be talking? Who are you sending a signal to? If you're toggling something, what is it you're toggling? And in this case, we are toggling point light toggleable zero. Now also, we have a material switch. This is just like a switch box. It's very, very simple. And what we're doing is we're switching between two settings for a material. We're setting a material to an on state, which makes the fluorescent tube look like it's glowing. And then we're switching to an off state, which makes the fluorescent tube appear to be off. Now if we select the switch, among its properties, you'll notice that looping is set to active. So if we hit this three times, the first time it turns the light on, the second time it turns the light back off, the third time it's going to loop back around, 
and it's going to switch the light back on. So it's just going to be a constant on, off, on, off each time the player uses this trigger. You see how this works? It's very, very straightforward. It's very easy once you get into it. But if you're not quite in tune with dropping down these nodes and connecting wires and, and kind of getting an idea of the general flow of, of information from one node to the next, it can be a little bit tricky at first. So we're going to start off slow just by building this very simple light switch and kind of get you in the mindset you need to be here. And then we'll move on to the destruction switch, which has all the little messages that it plays to the player. It then locks the door, so the door actually quits working when the alarm goes off. And then we've got a separate section here, which does our little 10-second countdown, after which we get an explosion sound, we blow up the player, and then we reset everything. Basically, we unlock the door and we stop the alarm in case they start back up. Overall, this is a very, very simple sequence. If you open up uh, certain levels from actual professional Unreal games, such as Gears of War or Unreal Tournament 3, you can find kismet sequences that are vast. As a matter of fact, you can actually define sequences, define scripts that create your very own kind of game. You can basically write games right here inside of Kismet, which is something that we're going to take a look at in an upcoming video where we're going to build a top-down game, an entirely different way to actually play Unreal all through Kismet. So all kinds of things you can do. But here, just for our introduction, we're going to start fairly simple. So go ahead and Get ready, because we're going to take a look at scripting up our levels. That is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.